Does suicide lead to hell? Stay tuned for a biblical and logical answer. To be honest, I was hesitant to comment on this, but after seeing some of the recent posts on social media concerning the tragic death of Robin Williams, I noticed a common trend. Uh, some posts were very heartfelt, and others were rather ugly. My concern was that many of the ugly comments, at least the ones I personally read, they were from fellow Christians. Now, I'm not here to comment on how we Christians should be representing Jesus, keeping in mind unbelievers are going to see these posts and it may give them the wrong impression of the church as a whole. At least, that's not all I'm here to comment on. That topic alone would take far too long for a video such as this. I will touch on it briefly though, but that's more near the end. Instead, I want to start by addressing a common question that I saw come up time and time again. Does suicide damn a person to hell automatically? Concerning some of the more unsavory, ugly, and I would even go as far as to say unchristian comments I saw, I don't believe the majority of them were written out of hate, though they may seem to have conveyed, be conveyed in that matter. Uh, rather, I, uh, I believe they were written out of ignorance. My hope is that by bringing the Bible... Um, and a little bit of common sense into the matter, we can lessen the ignorance and strengthen our resolve to reach the lost in all we do, even things like post on social media. Now, I'm not perfect in these regards. I, I'm far from it, in fact. But my prayer is that we can set aside our prejudices, put the Bible first, and all learn together. Now, there's only a few examples of suicide in the Bible. Uh, I want to look at two, especially. Um, first is that of uh, Samson. Judges 16, 29 through 31 reads, And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Eshtal in the burying place of Manoah his father. And he judged Israel twenty years. Now it's no doubt that Samson's sacrifice, he, he sacrificed his life for his country and people by destroying the enemy. The context of the story also conveys the idea that God granted Samson uh, the strength to be able to do this. Now, would it be reasonable to say that Samson was damned to hell because of this suicide? Now, of course, the suicide of Robin Williams and Samson are completely different, and I will address that in a moment. But first, I want to look at another biblical description of a suicide, that of Judas, uh, Judas Iscariot. Uh, Matthew 27, 5 states, And he cast down the, the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Now, due to the fact that G uh, Judas betrayed Jesus and later killed, him killed himself, most would accept the idea that Judas is in hell. Now, I'm not here to debate whether Judas is in regards to eternity, only to, st only to state that most would accept that he's in hell. So this shows that suicide is not as black and white as what we might sometimes claim it is. There are things we can state as truth, however. Jesus is the only way to the Father. We know this by his own words. If a person does not accept Jesus as their Savior, then regardless of the means of death, the person will not have the opportunity to be with God in eternity. Now, as far as to make the judgment and determination as if uh, as to if Robin Williams was saved or not, none of us know what the state of his heart was at the point of his death. Even if he was not saved before he took his own life, we 
just do not know if he cried out to Jesus in his heart in the final moments, in his final moments, like the thief on the cross. We can't make that determination. We simply cannot do it. Only God, <laughs> that's something only God knows. So I think it's, I think it's a bit, um, a bit insensitive for us as Christians to claim that we would have the answer as to where he is in eternity now. Uh, some will claim that suicide is an unforgivable sin. To that I say I am aware of only one sin that is deemed unpardonable by Jesus Christ, and we can look to the Bible for that. Speaking of Jesus, Matthew 12, 22-24 reads, Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, is, is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Later on, Jesus states in uh, Matthew 12, 31 through 32, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So this is the unforgivable sin, and it has nothing to do with suicide. It has to do with the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and that is defined as attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to the enemy, or to the devil, demons, fallen angel, all those sorts of things. This, this does not convey the idea that if a Christian commits suicide, they are negating their own salvation. Uh, this is describing a different sin altogether. And again, this is the only instance that I'm aware of that is uh, that that Jesus t teaches about a sin that is unforgivable. Uh, now there's another aspect to consider, uh, that of mental illness. If a person is mentally ill or suffering from a severe depression, as seems to be the case regarding Robin Williams, is that person held accountable if they take their own life? I believe it would be extremely presumptuous on our parts as Christians to make that determination. Uh, what we need to focus on is Jesus Christ and what he said in regards to heaven and hell. Now, as far as I can tell, based on the biblical evidence, the sin of suicide is comparable to, if not the same as, the sin of murder. So we must ask ourselves, is the blood of Jesus sufficient to cover the sin of murder if a person submits to him? and accepts his gift of salvation? It's obvious that things like murder and suicide are not pleasing in the eyes of the Lord, but again, we must remember, without the saving grace of Jesus, any transgression against God is damnable. Every single one of us would not be able to be in the eternal presence of God if it wasn't for, um, if, if it wasn't for um, his offer of salvation through uh through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. So we need to ask ourselves, are we more concerned with determining if an individual is in hell, or are we more concerned with preventing those still alive from ending up there? In everything we do, everything we say, and yes, everything we type in social media, we need to keep this in mind. Is this thing helping a person to accept Jesus? Or is it possible that this will cast a negative light on Jesus and become a person's excuse for not accepting Jesus? Now concerning things that have been uh, said in concerning this this tragedy might that it might be an example of uh, of an Illuminati ritualistic sacrifice and the strange coincidence of the Family Guy episode that aired at the same time and was expressing the same thing. I'm not here to comment on that. I just simply don't know enough about it and uh, to, to make any kind of claims one way or another. I will say, however, that as Christians, we need to be careful not to fall into sensationalistic or fear-based tactics to get our message across. I'm not saying everybody doing that is necessarily taking that approach, but that's something that we have to watch out for. 
Uh, if there is any truth to these claims, anyone making them is going to need a lot of evidence to convince people of the legitimacy of such a thing. Again, we need to keep in mind that unbelievers are going to be looking at these things. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't post anything that is actually true. We need to post the truth. But we need to do so gently, respectfully, and with love while providing sufficient evidence. Otherwise, if we're going to post things like that, we need to admit that it's just an opinion or an idea or a theory or a thought. Uh, we need to admit that we could be wrong. And regardless of how it turns out, the one thing that we know that we can be right about is how to attain salvation through Jesus Christ. Now, I want to leave you with a quote of Ray Comfort in response to how some Christians have reacted on social media in regards to the suicide of uh, Robin Williams. Uh, from his Facebook page, Ray Comfort wrote, If you believe that those who commit suicide go to hell, I have a few questions for you. Is there such a thing as slow suicide, where someone takes poison over a period of time until it kills them? If you say that there is, then consider the fact that smokers and alcoholics commit suicide when they die because they continually consumed known toxins. What about the person who was told by the doctor to cut back on food or it would kill them, but they took no notice and died because of obesity? Or how about these dear people who jumped off the World Trade Center? Their clothes caught fire, their flesh burned, and they deliberately leaned forward just a little. Or what about the brave soldier who takes cyanide to end his precious life rather than be responsible for the deaths of his fellow soldiers by giving information under torture? There are only a few suicides mentioned in the Bible. Only one makes reference to his eternal destination. So if we want to play God for a moment on this issue, we could probably do so for Judas. But when it comes to others, we should leave that judgment in the hands of our Creator and use a little discretion rather than add to the grief of relatives. And with that, I say thank you for watching, take care, and God bless.